Now, this video is going to be about basically using diesel in a petrol slash gasoline engine. Now, there's a couple of things I should mention first off. With gasoline slash petrol engines, um, you can get a very bare one. Um, you know, you don't need the fuel injectors, you don't need almost all the electronics. All you really need is the bare engine, the air cleaner, the inlet manifold, which is just the pipes that go between the air cleaner and the head, the exhaust manifold, which is the exhaust pipe system, um, and a working ignition system. And it's preferable to also have a choke, um, you know, and pretty much these engines will run off whatever sort of thing you can turn into a gas um, or is already in gas form, propane, butane, a mix of the two, which is what my car's running off, biogas, wood gas, coal gas, natural gas, MAPP, whatever else thing you've got. Um, so yeah, technically speaking, you could probably even run it on fart gas if you can light your farts up. Um, you know, you can have steam of other solvents or gasified solvents, um, you know, and we're going to talk about diesel. Um, you know, and you can run these engines off any of that stuff. I've seen, a, a, well, one of them was a taxi I've seen that basically had a hole in the air cleaner or something like that. Uh, I think it was an aftermarket air cleaner too. Um, and the pipe for the propane going in through that. Um, and look, basically with my, what's his name, uh, with my first propane car, they just it was a carburetor machine and they just drilled a hole through the side of the carburetor throat and whacked the pipe on that, um, just below where the choke is. So yeah, now with all this, I'm not just going to cover diesel here, I'm going to cover diesel that may have been sitting around for, I've heard of somebody who had a demolition job where they had to get rid of some large fuel tanks and there was this old diesel in them that was five or more years old. It might have been seven years old, I think it actually was. Um, you know, and they had a large amount of diesel from that. Um, stale canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, whatever else oil. Um, old heating oil, pretty much anything that you can get in an oil form, um, you know, and also, as I said, alcohol, steam, and steam of other solvents, shellite, kerosene that's been gasified, or whatever. A lot of these things, a gasoline petrol engine will use just about every single one of them that I've mentioned there, um, including hypothetically fart gas if you can light your farts. Now, I've seen a little documentary made by a uh, Shell Oil Company in 1952 and have a look in the description and it should be down there. And it's worth a watch. Now I sort of assume that because the Germans used... They basically ran out of acetylene in World War I and they used gasified diesel and the gas from this diesel, like diesel gas so to speak, uh, as opposed to wood gas or coal gas. This diesel gas they used to cut steel and even weld and they said it was sort of dirty. Um, it wasn't ideal, but you got the job done and quite simply they didn't have any other option because uh, they ran out of acetylene and this was the next best option. And so they used that and I thought, well that's liable that you could, if you can do that, if they were cutting steel with it, you could use it in an engine. I was sort of worried that it may be a little bit too hot uh, and the engine may overheat running from it. Um, but I've since found out there's engines that use it. Um, and the hot bulb engine is one of those. Now these were invented in 1890 by Ackroyd, I think his name was Ackroyd, someone or another. Anyways, this is one here. Now, I hope you're familiar with engines because I'll be rather fast here. Flywheel, crankshaft, con rod, uh, piston, bore, inlet, exhaust, 
and this is your hot bulb. Connected to the head, which can be through where the spark plug has gone, hint, hint. Now basically what happened is these on the intake stroke of air, diesel would be injected into this hot bulb. Now for the first five to ten minutes you've got to hold a blowtorch, which is this crappy bit here, um, on the hot bulb. And basically the diesel that comes in gets turned to steam, maybe, but I actually think it's been gasified. Uh, because I have seen one of the, one of these things started before I understood how they worked uh, only a month or two ago and now I can explain what I saw and what I believe was going on. <coughs> it had essentially a decompression belt which is a very large threaded bolt with a right angle pretty much um, on this bulb. I think it was on the neck of the bulb but I've drawn it sort of slightly up on the side of the bulb but anyways it doesn't really matter. Um, now what had happened is in the intake stroke it would suck air in but it also squirt diesel and this diesel would be gasified as it hit the sides of this hot bulb and then it would come forward for then an injector would close, it would come forward for the compression stroke and it would, like most diesels, ignite with the large amount of compression and then go kaboom, power stroke and then exhaust stroke and then it would be back to intake stroke and this would start squirting again now what basically would happen is a few of the wives were talking and I could see it with my own eyes and they were talking amongst themselves and basically you had to wait till there was enough white smoke coming out the decompression valve that when there's quite a lot of white smoke coming out um, you know that meant that she was getting close uh, and then one of the wives said if we whistle you know you're really close and it whistled about four or five times and then they closed the decompression valve and they got it going this thing was absolutely enormous. I mean, it was at least five foot, probably six or seven foot diameter flywheel. The exhaust at least 12 inches wide, may have even been a little bit more, but I think it was about 12 inch um, pipe they had, like a foot wide diameter, the exhaust on this thing. They started it by hand, mind you. Now, after he's been heating it for a while, they you know, open the decompression valve and, and someone will just sort of crank it over slowly and they'll just see how much white smoke's coming out, if any. And then when there's a fair bit coming out, um, you know, then they know they're getting close and they may try and um, basically on the compression stroke close the decompression valve and, and give it a good hard yank and see if it'll boom, just cause one fire because if it fires once they're liable to get the whole thing starting, you know, and, and get it running. Um, what was actually happening was the white smoke was coming out of there and there's a fair bit coming off and then there was a lot coming off after a few more of these um, strokes had been made by the bloke turning the flywheel uh, and you'd hear a whistle and as the, one of the wives said if you knew it was whistling you knew you are getting really close and that was basically they had so much gasified diesel coming out that it was catching a light from the blowtorch flame and <coughs> You sort of go, when you see a whole lot flare up like a blooming, you know, petrol fumes getting lit. And it was basically a low order explosion, um, which was trying to, it was lighting up all the gas outside the bulb, and it was trying to go inside the bulb through the decompression valve hole um, and light what was inside the hot bulb. And basically, in the process of that, um, it'd make a whistle noise as it was going through the decompression valve. Now whether that was the, this in here igniting and being thrown out or the actual flame passing through the front of it or what, it was making you know a few whistle noises. After about four or five of them he decided to close it again as the bloke was coming forwards and boom, 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 and she all sprung to life. Um, but basically you need to get this hot enough in the first instance uh, and then after that the pure fact that there's explosions going on here just keeps it hot anyway. Um, but yeah, there you go. It was an engine running uh, actually without a spark plug from compression like most diesels do from gasified diesel. And this hot bulb is sometimes referred to as the vaporizer. Now, you could do a similar thing, I believe, with a gasoline engine uh, using the heat of the exhaust pipe or the exhaust manifold and basically mounting like a hot bulb on it with diesel constantly dripping in 
and going to the inlet manifold. Now it would be preferable to put it through an intercooler and cool it down because basically engines run better with denser air and denser air um, and associated gases are always colder uh, or you know colder gases are denser. Um, the other option you could do is to run it from there to a intercooler or just a damn big piece of aluminium pipe or copper pipe if you happen to have some laying around but if you're making some use aluminium because it's cheaper um, you know and basically uh, have it go to a gas bag and then you basically got to turn this up you know with a gas bag if you've done this just straight on the exhaust and then into the engine um, it may take you a while to sort of accelerate and it'll be pretty much one of these ones where you just got to keep it running at a, a stable sort of a pace um, but if you were to use a gas bag, you could accelerate really fast, but all you need to do is just keep it, because the gas bag would act as a buffer, but all you need to do is keep an eye on the gas bag to make sure it didn't get down too low or that it didn't get far too full and, and almost pop itself or whatever, uh, you know, stretch it out a bit too much. Um, but, yeah, you could probably gasify diesel, waste corn oil, waste soybean oil, canola oil, or you know something along those lines using a gasification method pretty similar to my coffee tin one. Now a lot of gasifiers you guys may know actually have a limited amount of air drawn in um, you know to sustain the reaction in the gasifier um, but with mine you know my little glorified coffee tin that I showed with Troy um, that basically didn't have any air intake it was just making gases from the fuel uh, and when the fuel ran out, then it stopped making gas. As simple as that. Um, but if you're constantly dropping in diesel, trickling it in, you know, you're liable that um, it'll, you know, keep making gases. And I don't know if you'd really want to be having air coming in here for possible chance of explosion of your diesel gasification system. Um, not explosion, but the whole shitstorm can catch on fire. Um, and you know you're probably safer with no oxygen at all as opposed to a small amount of oxygen risking what happens in this engine which is flames inside the hot bulb which would then be flames inside your diesel gasifier on your exhaust pipe and things may go from bad to worse. It also may <coughs> be an idea to have this between the intercooler and the, gasifier, uh, and the gas bag rather um, running through a bubbler or from the gas bag back to the engine running through a bubbler. Actually, it'd be better to put it on the uh, side in between this and the gas bag. Yeah, I think it'd be a lot safer, and it'd probably be a good idea to have it running through a bubbler. What do I mean by a bubbler? Well, pretty much a bong. That's pretty much the easiest way to explain it. Um, but yeah, there you go. You know, uh, you could either use you know, alcohol in a uh, carburetor, or alcohol steam um, or any number of gasified oils uh, and you can run a gasoline slash petrol engine um, off of any of those fuels. Usually most of your ones that aren't oil based you can just put them through a carburetor without any worries um, aside from the fact that all the stupid rubbers and all the seals aren't really made for it in some cases. Um, if you've got a vehicle that's been a flex fuel vehicle or something like that or is tolerant of a certain amount of stuff uh, amount of ethanol in your, your fuel you might be sort of better off but yeah this is more talking about um, gasifying different forms of oils uh, and using in a petrol engine um, and yeah a few other things I should mention um, the compression ratio apparently for making an engine like this has to be spot on. Uh, if it's too low it won't ignite at all, if it's too high it fires too early and then you'll crank this around this way and it'll go boom and it'll throw itself backwards and you'll never actually get it to run properly. So compression ratio is a real specific thing uh, with these sort of engines. Um, also the rings apparently, oh, the, the compression is in between a petrol and a diesel engine so if you can divert, uh, to convert a normal diesel to this you might be alright. You might be alright with good quality petrol engines, 
But your real crummy ones or your half burnout ones or your ones with the rings that are half buggered already, it's probably not going to happen. Or you may have a reduced life of the engine. Uh, but let's face it, when you can get blooming dead lawnmower engines for five bucks each that are good enough for converting to this, does it really matter? Like, <laughs> honestly, you know. So this is a thing. Um, you know, there's there's a few things where um, you may be able to get a petrol engine and convert to a hot bulb engine, um, but there's no point and it won't last either because of the compression rates. Um, if that petrol engine still has an ignition system that's working. Um, so yeah, there's a bit of uh, food for thought on the old hot bulb engines and, and gasification of diesel, which is done in these sort of engines without a spark plug, uh, but I think you're a lot better off with a spark plug and a lower compression rate because then you can tell it when you want it to fire and it will actually start as opposed to not work at all or just keep throwing itself back into reverse and stuff like that. But you know, let's face it, there are a dime a dozen. In mid-2002 I worked for a bloke who, uh, whose brother worked at a wrecker and they could get complete uh, engines. Um, I'm not so sure about the manifolds but I think it was almost complete engines, you know, it was the whole engine itself. Um, for fifty dollars each, um, and I, I don't know about the manifolds on it, um, but you know, fifty bucks, and now we've got even more vehicles, so they're probably even less. Um, furthermore, as I said, lawn mowers a dime a dozen, and most of them have got block carburetors, all terribly fouled up, lemon spark plugs, or someone who never changed the oil in them and basically burnt them out, which that'd be no good for you. Um, but I can go to a place that basically is, it's like a dump, but it's a processing centre, and you drop off all your hard rubbish and that there, um, and they, you know, you, you can't drop off normal waste there, you only hard rubbish, and they look through some of it, a lot of it goes into scrap metal, um, and a lot of the rest of it, um, you know, goes into actual proper landfill, but some of it uh, they salvage and it's a great source for 44 or 55 gallon drums and also they have that many lawn mowers there you just have that trip over them coming in the front door you've never seen so many lawn mowers um, and a place like that would be great for a uh, you know full stroke lawn mower especially if it's um, you know hasn't been run out of oil if you can check the dipstick on it or whatever um, but yeah that's just a bit of food for thought for you all and go have a little watch of the documentary down in the um, description and uh, yeah there you go